when I heard about this topic today, event marketing, how to make your brand experience more immersive, uh, it is one of the things that's close to my heart. I've worked in this industry long ago uh, and then doing a lot of interviews on this topic over the years. And I had this interesting chat with the panelists before the panel, and they have worked on some of the best brands in the business and the anecdotes were very interesting. I'm sure you're going to enjoy this panel. Uh, but I have been given a time slot of half an hour and in this I have to finish everyone speaking. So without much ado, I'll uh, get to getting the opening comments uh, at the outset. Uh, uh, I would want to request Naveen Kundu for his opening comment. Naveen, over to you. Thank you. Th thank you, Tarun. And thank you, B Business World, for having me here today. Uh, you know, because I belong to the travel and events in mice industry, my perspective will be purely towards uh, talking about creating experiences during uh, the programs that corporates put together for their brand enhancement when it comes to meetings, events, and you know, immersive trips for organizing for their uh, stakeholders, which could be their employees, their distributors, their uh, uh, channel partners, their retailers. And, and, and what I always believe in is that uh, to create a brand and to make it more immersive and to make an experience more immersive, the first and foremost thing is the human touch and the personalization. Because uh, the word of mouth, the person who speaks about the brand is very important. And you don't treat your employees or your stakeholders as elements. You treat them uh, very, in a very personalized way and you create and curate programs for them, which in turn enhances their experience and, and becomes enthralling. So, so once they are back from that travel experience and once they are back from that e event or a meeting or, or an incentive program that they've attended, uh, the whole experience for them has to be exuberating and they talk about it. And to me, that is one of the foremost areas that uh, companies and brands need to touch upon to enhance their brand experience to make it more immersive. With that, I will uh, go back to Tarun and say, you can go to the rest of the panelists. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, way back in 2016, uh, there was a campaign by Johnny Walker, uh, the whiskey brand called Symphony in the Blue Event. Very interestingly, uh, people who participated in this event were given an opportunity to use torch flames and char the oak casks in which the whiskey was kept. And after that, whiskey got the smoky flavor. What happened after that is that 10,000 uh, year old iceberg melted ice was given to them with the description that this comes from the Arctic and you pour, you, you put these ice into the whiskey and take the first sip. Uh, that was one of the experience. After you had that whiskey, you were taking to a room which was full of whiskey mist of that whiskey. That was an experiential event created in 2016 for a whiskey brand. Of course, it's a high cost event. ROI is not seen in such events, but of course, the user experience is seen. Uh, uh, so, so, you know, in immersive brand experience, they can be unique concepts which are in a sense not thought about earlier. These are original ideas by individuals. I'll go to Dev Priya for her opening comment. Thank you, Tarun. Uh, I think I'm going to start by going back to basics and talking about what a brand really is. So um, a brand, duh, I mean, no brainer. A brand is really not your logo, your website. It's definitely not your visiting card. So I'm going to ask um, anybody in the audience to just tell me what a brand is to you. What is yes? Beautiful. It's a promise. Anybody else can ask the people right at the back who are looking at their phones. Can you experience this panel? Can you get immersed in it? Anybody? What is a brand? Okay. Yes. Identification of a product, like from where it belongs and what it has. So that's a good. Well tried. So um, a brand is nothing but a collection of experiences and perceptions that a company or, a, uh, or an individual also will create in the minds of its stakeholders. So the, in the definition of brand lies experience, lies the word experience. And now more than ever before, uh, we see consumers going beyond what is rational and logical to um, sort of lean into emotions when they look at their preferences for a brand. You can't really sort of, you know, tangibly quantify why you, you choose a certain brand. And it's not just about awareness. It's about connect. It's about emotional connect. And, um, you know, companies and brands are really going the extra mile to create that and to nurture that emotional response that the consumers are bringing in so that the products go beyond just being inanimate objects sitting on a shelf. 
And um, I would say that in the current context, whether it's hybrid or in person, events are a very straightforward way to ensure that emotional connect. So, uh, thank, thank and create that emotion. Thank so you, Devpriya, for that perceptive. introductory comment. I'll go across to Ankur now. Uh, uh, Ankur, you could speak about your company and also your opening comment. Hi, everybody. My name is Ankur Kalra. I run an agency called Vibgyor. Uh, we've been around since 2002, and we are in Delhi, Bombay, Bangalore. We essentially do brand activation, events, etc. But uh, brand activation is 70-80% of the business that we do. So um, for me, immersive brand experiences actually is what we stand for. Uh, like they really said, uh, creating a connect between the brand and the consumer is is what is uh, immersive brand experiences, right? Uh, immersive brand experiences do not necessarily have to be sexy or larger than life. They need to they need to underline the objectives of the brand and create a connect with the consumer. So there are lots of campaigns that we've done in the over the years, and you know, uh, if you'd like me to speak about one of them, for example, we did this thing called Amazon Tatkal, where we were able to uh, create a connect between over five lakh sellers who were in small towns and cities and who were able to come onto the online uh, bandwagon through this entire campaign. Our brief was not just to work for Amazon, but to work to grow the entire online selling space. And that is what is possible using a brand activation campaign. So the, the reach is far larger than just a sexy uh, looking um, display in a mall or something like that. It's about the objectives that the brand has and the ability to connect with audiences in a way that the brand can touch, feel, and inspire an audience. That to me is what brand Thank you, Vipul, uh, for explaining that. Ankur, and, uh, not Vipul. Sorry. Thank you, Ankur. I correct myself for explaining that. Go to Vipul. Uh, could you ex talk about your company also and your opening comment? Hi, I represent Workaholics Entertainment Solutions. We are into experiential marketing for the last 17 years now. To me, you know, brand is just another walking person, you know, how will you identify, you know, whether he's uh, youthful, joyful, young, old. And uh, in today's world, when a lot of brands are eyeing, you know, big marketing chunk of, you know, consumer uh, spends, they need to stand out. And, you know, in order to stand out, they must create experiences around the brand with whom people can connect. So if I am a beer brand, I can, you know, I'll be happy to be a part of a music festival where youngsters come in and it's a cool thing to be there, so, you know, seen with a beer of, Budweiser, you know, can of Budweiser in the hand and get clicked. So uh, if I were to be a luxury brand like a Mercedes Benz, you know, experiences that are going to create can be around golf and things like that. So it's a immersive experiences to me are a way to extend what the brand has to offer beyond the uh, nitty gritties of what the product specification is. You know, it's how people identify themselves with the brand and how they want to be a part of uh, their, uh, you know, audience in times to come. Thank you. Thank you for the opening comment. I'll uh, now go across to Sonal. Uh, Sonal, uh, could you explain uh, in a sense about the company you work for and also uh, your opening comment before we move on to the topic? Yeah, so I think I uh, work for Chell and uh, Chell is uh, an experiential agency and we are fortunate to manage one of the most successful global brands, which is Samsung. So all these experiences that you see for Samsung are something which are built by us. And at Shell, I think the philosophy is that, you know, where creativity inspires technology. And I think these are two very important pillars uh, when we talk about brand experience as well, because creativity is which encourages you to think innovative, to think out of the box, and technology is an enabler there. And I think the session that we had before us, which talked about hybrid, also highlights the same point. And I think I just agree with the panel, and I think everybody has very beautifully touched upon brand or the experience. But I think at elementary level, I would say, what is immersive? I think the basic definition is involvement. And I think as human beings, anything that we are not involved with, it will never create a memory in our heads. So I think what brands are trying to do is to encourage consumers to create a memory in their head. And I think that's what we all are aiming to do through these unique experiences that we are drawing. Thanks. Thanks. So sight, smell, sound and touch is what creates an immersive brand Absolutely. experience. So you Absolutely. see, you smell, you think. So for example, 
uh, the, the kind of uh, smell you get when you enter a cinema hall, the smell of fresh popcorn that's artificially put, or the perfume, new car smell in a perfume, as Martin Lindstrom said, people pay, feel, pay for the new car feel, you know, it's, uh, but, you know, Howard Schultz, uh, his name is of German descent, but he's uh, the founder of Starbucks, he said that uh, after COVID, uh, the future for our brand is to make uh, the branded space more experiential, for example, also IKEA, uh, they brand their cafeterias and the lighting there is all IKEA lighting. So when you like it, you end up buying the lighting, the furniture is all IKEA. So they say the cafeteria, so you actually, food is used as also an experiential tool in many places. And taking uh, that forward, we'll go on to our- fact, Tarun, I would want to add to it. Uh, I was fortunate to work for IKEA when IKEA was launched here. And I think one of the campaigns that we managed there was how to tell people that IKEA is going to open in Hyderabad. And we use technology, which is virtual reality. Of course, that's not a new technology. Uh, but the way we used it and the story that we created through it uh, really created a great experience for people. Uh, so, you know, IKEA, of course, is known for certain products. Uh, giving them, giving people a catalog also would suffice to tell them, okay, uh, these are the products that we sell. But virtual reality immersed people in what IKEA is all about. They are just not about the product and services that you rightly mentioned. They are about an experience that they create. So we did exciting stuff like managing sleepovers inside their store, you know, which was very, very exciting for people. Uh, as you rightly mentioned, the restaurant there created so much high people were so excited to visit that. So just wanted to touch upon since you talked about IKEA, you know. Thank you for sharing that, Sonal. I'll go across to uh, Naveen Kundu now from Ibn Naveen. One thing uh, which I myself experienced is a lot of plug and play happens in India. So I saw a leading mobile phone brand and they had a concept of a coffee store in a mobile phone selling space. And literally nobody was using it. People were just coming to see their mobiles back. Nobody was ordering an espresso because Indian culture is different. Maybe I have chai more than espresso. Uh, the mobile was not a tier A mobile or say a list brand. It was, I think, a, a, a tier two brand. Uh, uh, so plug and play doesn't work in India. And keeping that in mind, could you also give some anecdotes in your business? How do you tailor it for India? Well, you know, again, I'll go back to the travel experiences that we create. Uh, and I'll give an example of an insurance company here. An insurance company was, is it, you know, insurance is a very highly competitive business. And it's a push product. So nobody comes in today, buys insurance in India. You have to push the product. So there was this one company and he said, look, we are competing against three large brands. One is primarily LIC. The second is HDFC and the third is ICICI. Now, how do we make things different? How do we, and, you know, and, and the set of advisors is actually very common. So an insurance advisor, you could be an insurance advisor of LIC, but your wife, you could take an agency in the name of your wife and your kids and you could, you could sell insurance. So how does he, how does, how does he get connected to my company? Because uh, while I'm giving him the plug and play model, we're training him, we're giving him everything. It's not working out. My policies are not selling. So I said, what you do is you create a, you make, you announce a trip. And we will create a program and we'll curate a program, we'll plan a program, we'll budget a program. And we will we'll create an experience that when he comes back, he would only want to sell your policies. And he said, okay, how much is the budget? So we, we worked on the budget, we worked on the destination, we worked on, so for example, I said, okay, what is it you want to do? He said, yeah, I've never, I've never personally been to Spain. So I would want to take my people to Spain. I said, okay, let's go to Spain. Now, everybody talks about this, uh, uh, you know, that experience of that movie that came in, which was, uh, what do you call that movie of, uh, uh, you know, that Zindagi Na Milegi Dubara, but nothing like that. We created something that people had never seen. So if you go to Spain or a Barcelona, you will go and do your normal sightseeing tour, have an Indian food or go to one place, go to a club and come back. We said, no, we will do a welcome event at Castle Monjuic. Now that's a government place. Nobody can get an event. It's like Red Ford of India. Yes. So we took people and and it costed just 500 euros to rent the whole castle. It doesn't cost much. So money doesn't buy everything, right? Money doesn't buy experience. But to get to that, we had to go to the mayor and we had to go to the local mayor and say, look, we need this. And he somehow allowed it. And when people came to Castle Monjo, you can saw whole of Barcelona from there. And they had a welcome party there with Indian music and Indian food being served like, 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 like an experience. And then from there, they went to Kem now where they did a, where they saw a football match and they had lunch with those players. It was a local football match. You know, 
Barcelona was playing with somebody. We took them there and they had lunch in the place. Then they went to the National Museum and did their awards night. And when people came back, they were so enthralled with the entire experience. I was called by the CEO of the company the next year and he gave an award to me and said, you are the sales and a brand enabler of our company. Thank that you. is what actually so works. So I say, we believe in creating experiences and brand, as, I, as I said, the people sitting on this panel are all, you know, brand creators. I create brand experience. That, that's an interesting anecdote you gave and more when you said that it doesn't cost much money. It's about ideation. You give a unique experience, which people themselves won't be able to avail. And that's why they take a memory. And, back. and it, it, it resulted in the volume of the business and people using those, buying those insurance policies. And then, you know, coming across to the company and saying, and they saw the difference. No advertising, sorry, but I mean, I, we're not in, you know, I, I'm not against advertising, but no advertising, no social media presence, no activation could have done what, what it did because it connected human beings to the brand. Right. Thanks. Thanks for sharing that anecdote with us. Now, Dev Priya Khanna has worked on experiential campaigns for Carlsberg and Oriflame, which he'll share about. Dev Priya, over to you. Yeah, I mean, uh, taking over from uh, what you said just now, I think the context and the customization and the culture, I think these are the uh, three C's that are uh, creativity is a given, I would assume, uh, and the customer. So the creativity and customer are a given, but it's really important. And how did we do it? So, um, you know, I've had the good fortune of uh, heading um, both Oriflame and Carlsberg as its marketing director. And um, for those of you who are acquainted with these industries, Oriflame is a multi-level marketing company where uh, it's, it's completely dark, right? You can't really advertise and um, there's no shelf. So uh, for us uh, at Oriflame, the events were all about creating the right experience. And I'll just uh, take you back to this one um, anti-aging product that we launched. And, and those days, I didn't really know much about anti-aging. Times have changed. But uh, uh, this was this... Um, so the, the event curator, it was very important for them to understand what our brand objectives were. Here we were launching a cream which was like 40 plus. And uh, this was a, uh, so they organized a fashion show. And it was such a delight because they brought in the models who were all 40 plus. And, you know, so these were all models who were at the top of their game when they were in their prime, but they were brought back and they were, you know, very visible names. And as they walked down the ramp and, we, and, and uh, you know, the event curator also looked at designers who were 40 plus. As they walked down the ramp, the uh, target audience that was around, they were like so connected with the brand because you could identify. So if you had a 20 something walking down the ramp, which is typically what a fashion uh, coordinator puts in, you wouldn't identify with the product. And, and then we created a bit of an experiential hub around where you could actually try out the product. And there was a you know, point of sale as well. So um, all these experiences uh, merged beautifully. And that was just one example of some fabulous uh, events that we did at Oriflame, which was all uh, around immersion. And uh, Naveen is right. It doesn't really have to cost money. It has to be very relevant. And quickly, I'll tell you about the Carlsberg experience. My friend Devraj, who's going to be in here, um, speaking at a panel, he's not here. So um, their company and, uh, and the brand are uh, Carlsberg. We uh, came together to launch Sunburn. If you remember, I mean, a lot of you will be uh, familiar with Sunburn, which we did in Goa. It's become a flagship uh, property now. Uh, and uh, we sort of, it was... We had floats. I mean, we took over. Tuborg actually took over that entire event, and it was Tuborg Sunburn. And uh, we sort of created floats. We created points of consumption. Share of throat went up. Awareness uh, went up. So it's really, really important for, for the um, event company and the brand to tie in what the brand's KPIs are, what the core objectives are, and who the target audience is. If you're not putting all these things together, then you're not going to be able to create the kind of immersion that you seek to. Thanks. Thanks for sharing the example and also uh, the sunburn, which of course has taken off in a big way. I'll go across to Vipul Pandi. Vipul, you worked on an interesting experiential campaign for KTM bikes. Could you share that with the audience? See, uh, bikes for some is a, is, you know, thrill, you know, bike for some is status symbol, bike for some is adventure. And, uh, you know, you simply can't communicate that in a showroom, you know, to your audiences. So for KTM, you know, we used to do these drives wherein a group of around 25, 30 
bike enthusiasts were taken to a, a hill station resort you know for a overnight stay and you had you know people flagging in the front and the back and the emergency vehicle and ambulance you know in the full safety gear in place and people used to enjoy and they were also able to you know witness the power the product uh, was having you know in terms of the hilly terrain rides and uh, during the evening uh, it, it was also a building of a community of bikers so used to have a bonfire drinks and then next day morning they used to get up and go back and the kind of numbers that they were able to achieve and also able to instill a feeling of pride in you know all those who were part of that you know brand so they, when they were back they were their brand ambassadors so they used to go back give references and you know get conversions in their friend circle and relations so that's how you know these brands used to capitalize on the power of experiences thanks thanks for sharing that and i go back to a conversation i heard from rajiv bajaj i think about 4 5 years ago uh, when he was speaking about ktm we first spoke about pulsar he said when he with a team of 15 r and d engineers uh were to on the designing stage of launching pulsar uh, they had a 100 crore budget uh, rajiv bajaj uh, rahul bajaj had told them that i don't know why you are doing this project we are very well off selling scooters we do very good sales figures so he said no sir, daddy the market is changing allow me 100 crores is what we can afford i have these 15 engineers and i'll design a goofy sexy bike which have the girls looking at the boys if he rides on it pulsar came out of that i'm not going to give it the bajaj branding i'm going to only brand it as pulsar because if it is bajaj pulsar then it gets a specific mindset that ye to bajaj chala raha hai he has to drive a pulsar so you will nowhere see that there's no bajaj written on pulsar uh, uh, even at ktm rajiv bajaj said anything that you know it's a lifestyle product how do i get people to uh, spend 2 lakhs and above on a bike or 1 lakh 55000 1 lakh 60000 in the minimum Uh, with dominar he tried the same in the 350 but it didn't work as well but that's life some things work like somebody joked the other time in why did kingfisher airlines didn't work because it didn't have any business model it had only models but that for another day uh, i'll go across to ankur kalra who runs happy uh, flap it is an experiential uh, 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 marketing division of his company if you could share some sampling examples that like you have done for brand successfully sure i'll do that but before that since you spoke about pulsar i remember a campaign we had done many years ago for hindustan lever called uh, man of the town and um, the reason there is a pulsar connect i remembered that so it's a very interesting story if you give me 2 minutes uh, you know this is for the fair and lovely brand of hindustan lever and now it's been many years so one can talk about it so um, a lot of men in smaller towns used to use fair and lovely on the sly they would take it Uh, from the chemist saying it's for our wives or girlfriends or whatever sisters or mothers and they would use it and this is some this is um, an insight that they got from the research that men are shy about buying this product but they are using it on the sly how do we bring it in the forefront so when they created the fal men fair and lovely men they said that we want uh, this target audience to be able to accept this so they gave us a brief that our job is to make this an acceptable product in rural not rural but in b and c class towns and can you create an experiential campaign we created this campaign called man of the town where we uh, took a large uh, college ground or some ground in that town and did a lot of manly activities so we did these army challenges and we did this uh, rope jumping and tarzan swing and this that and the other so called perceived manly uh, activities and we got 5 600 Seven hundred people in the town to com to compete for that, and the first prize, the guy who comes first uh, from all these challenges, got a Pulsar bike. Again, a very manly thing. The Pulsar was a new bike. This I'm talking about two thousand four or something like that, two thousand five. So Pulsar was the ultimate symbol of manliness and sexiness and all that. And so we created this immersive campaign, and fair and lovely man of the town made this product acceptable to men, which was. earlier they were you know shy about purchasing it or picking it up from a chemist uh, thing and an experiential campaign across 19 cities showed huge results we did this two years in a row the first year they saw, saw such encouraging results that next year we did 17 more towns so we did it in in bihar in west bengal in jharkhand in uh, you know all in in your entire north and east belt where men wanted to become fair but never wanted to be caught dead buying a fairness cream So since you spoke about pulsar i just uh, remember this is that. an interesting anecdote you shared uh, 
when brands become aspirational uh, i've seen a reel on instagram which shows boys walking into starbucks stores clicking a photograph of the starbucks uh, uh, what what the glass not buying ordering any coffee and putting it on their social media because it's so aspirational to be at starbucks but at about 450 rupees for an average cold coffee not every student can afford it he has to save of not indians are not that rich but it's an aspiration to be seen there uh, that is what starbucks has been able to create i think when this category was launched with barista uh, amit judge i think launched it about in 2002 uh, and of course was later taken over by a chennai based guy and also ccd uh, completely now taken over by starbucks through their experiential marketing the whole touch and feel of the but i'll go across to sonal varma she worked on an interesting experiential campaign for exxon mobil uh, and also samsung could you share that with the audience yeah i think uh, devpriya very briefly touched upon the fact that it is very important who we are reaching out to and not every consumer would want to uh, you know uh, see technology or experience technology i mean this is something maybe a gen z or millennials really connect well with and that's why metaverse is catching up but i remember we used to run this program for exxon mobil and which we ran for more than 5 years which was a huge success now we are going to very very small cities you know uh, uh, tier 2 towns and uh, these are mechanics you know uh, they they don't have any aspirations what they want is a comfortable life and hence we said that okay let's build a training program for them you know let's touch upon their personal lives let's create an emotional connect with them and that's where you know in every small town when we went we talked about their child education how exon can help there we trained them to be the next level you know you were working under our stad why don't you become an independent mechanic there so uh, i think enabling a person to do more than just what a brand is standing for is also an important aspect i think if you connect with them at that level uh, it's a bigger Uh, uh it's a bigger achievement that you have than just talking about your product and service so i think those kind of experiences also still stay very very relevant because you know urban market behaves in a very different manner uh aspirations uh, not everybody might have uh, but yes you have to see who you're talking to what you want to talk to them about and what is that device that you need to use uh because you know i think we've talked about some great brand experiences but there are many bad ones also that at one point in time we would have created where the connect was missing so i think emotional connect is something which uh, plays a very important role when we talk about brand experiences it, it does i mean two experiences i i saw a concert called fiat cafe some time back uh, all fiat showrooms had a coffee shop now who will go to a fiat showroom to have coffee it didn't click of course that to shut down all those showrooms some guy gave that idea i don't know where he is now but he gave that idea it didn't work uh, but uh, on the issue of experiential marketing i think because we are moving towards the end of this panel uh, one closing comment from each one of you uh, uh, you know uh, starting with uh, uh, vipul vipul if you could uh, one closing comment from each one of you on experiential branding so i think experience is the way forward if you were to differentiate between two products sometimes they are not uh, they are kind of homogeneous and not uh, you can't differentiate with this is the features and pricing uh, experience you know comes and play an important role there you know and how consumer wants to identify with that experience you know so if we are able to create experiences which build on to the brand essence and consumer wants to connect with it i think that's where numbers will come thank you ankur uh, uh, when uh, vodka was being launched gregus was a vodka which was launched i think about 15 years ago no vodka was expensive the bacardi was the most expensive then gregus launched with a promise that i'll sell it for five times the cost what they did is they put gregus that all the expensive parties in france and europe at four times the price so a lot of exp- you know expensive parties a lot of rich people come they so they said how much does it cost he said it cost much more than bacardi it was eventually sold to bacardi that whole brand for about a billion dollars and more and when it come bacardi had rubbish that you know nobody will buy gregus nobody pays so much for vodka so if you outprice yourself out of the market people pay to be aspirational because the other rich guys are having i want to have it uh, they spent a lot of money placing it at a lot of expensive parties where they didn't make much money because they were just highlighting it but later they recovered all the cost uh, could you give me such any such example that you think of of a premium category and your closing comment so i completely agree with you it's all about positioning and a uh, touch feel experience with the consumer um for example we did the launch of armani in india 
where at Andaz, uh, at sorry, at one of the hotels in Aero City, we created a completely immersive experience for influencers, and we got all of them into this um, into this Armani world where there was um, makeover stations, there were larger than life props, there was a cinema hall which was created. Uh, they said they spent insane amount of money creating that experience. And these influencers, of course, uh, tweeted about it and Instagrammed about it and wrote about it. And just an event for 60 people reached out to millions of people and the brand got what it wanted. So, uh, and of course, as you all, as you know, the, the products that they sell are uh, atrociously priced, but uh, that is their strategy. And when they came into India, they wanted to create a unique immersive experience that helps establish their brand. And I think that is a perfect example of uh, what you spoke about, uh, you know, using Grey Goose. Thank you. I'll go across to Naveen. Sorry. Look, I tell you something that, you know, you can make every experience immersive, but I would, through this medium, reach out to the brands and the corporates and people that create a human touch for your customers. Technology is there, but it's an exaggeration. Create that human touch. Connect to the person through your brand personally. Create a reality experience for him. You know, once you create a reality experience for him and you have that human touch and you're taking care of your customer because ultimately it's everything for the customer. And in pursuit of trying to do these great experiences and creating these immersive experiences, somewhere down the line, you lose the track of the customer as to what does really customer want. So the first and foremost thing is get down to the basics and take care of your customer, create a human touch, create a reality experience for him and, and then seek feedback and figure out what needs to be done next. I mean, I mean, that's what I would feel is the most important thing to do today. Thank you. Thank you. I'll go to Devapriya for a closing comment. And how do you make a brand more aspirational to the experiential experience? Uh, could you give an anecdote? So um, I happened to be at uh, last year, in fact, I happened to be at this uh, event, which was uh, a collaboration between uh, Skims, which is Kim Kardashian's clothing line and Tendi. And this was held at uh, Selfridges on Oxford Street. And uh, there was this, so it, it's right in the middle of the mall, okay? And it's obviously everyone knows it's a high-end mall, but it was cordoned off and you had the who's who inside, but you had the average shoppers outside. And there was this whole feeling of FOMO, you know, fear of missing out. And you could see what was going on there, but you, you could not enter there unless you were part of that invite list. So, but what they did very beautifully was, they involved the people who were standing outside. There were contests, there were lucky draws, and through the lucky draw, every one hour, uh, you could get one person to get into that. So, so for me, so that's, that's an example of how they created, and of course, you can imagine, obviously, the influencers who were invited inside were, were talking about it, tweeting, Instagramming, everything, but the people outside wanted to say that, okay, I was here, I was part of the action, and therefore, they were talking about it as well. So, um, you know, as a brand creator, whether uh, it's on the corporate side or now as a brand consultant, I have a magic formula, which I've always followed and it's created results. And that really is that um, brand immersion is really a sum total of um, aspiration, anticipation, activation, and participation. So if you have these four elements in place, you cannot go wrong. Of course, that, you know, you experiment, but uh, by and large, you'll be able to create those wow, immersive experiences that your brand will be known for. I'll go, thank you. I'll go across to Sonal. But my Sonal, you worked on Samsung. Uh, it's a premium phone. Uh, there have been a lot of cheap Chinese phones, but offer equal good value. How do you position the brand different? With what aspect of experience? Is it the how the way the showrooms are? A lot of buying happens online, but still, you know, a lot of people prefer touch and feel what aspect of the sale uh, uh, generates that kind of premium feel about the product? What do you think it is? So I think at Samsung, we have premium and also uh, products for masses. And I think for both, we have a very different strategy. Uh, when we talk about the premium segment, and I think during pandemic, uh, you know, we uh, worked on a couple of very interesting ideas. Live commerce was one, you know, uh, how to interact live with people because you cannot meet them physically. 
I think another very interesting program that we did was creating Galaxy Creators Lounge, you know. So I would say that let's not limit our experience only to the consumers. I think we need to involve a larger community. And that was a great platform for us, as Ankur had also given an example that we had some 60, 80 people only who could physically attend that event. But the kind of amplification that generated for us, it ran in millions, you know, it was a brilliant experience. And now it's a program which is running independently for us, you know, uh, Galaxy creators are so excited about every time we have any premium phone category that we launch, they would want to absolutely you know they, they would want to be a part of it you know now we have to select people who could come and experience that phone and uh, you know currently also we just recently launched one of the premium phones there and uh, you know uh, the influencers were so so excited and they engaged to their local consumers you know because they are the heroes of those particular segments that we are talking about so uh, that's the distinction that we create and those are the kind of experiences we always innovate on uh, as to how to involve the community and also uh, i think employees play a very important role i think we have also engaged with samsung employees on every launch that we do like for an, for a series i think very very simple and basic the communication was awesomeness so one fine day when people walked inside the office at their desk, there was a customized communication, awesome sonal. You know, I was so excited about it, you know? So I would say just involve the entire channel, distributors, dealers, influencers, and employees as well, because they are your brand ambassadors as well. So the experience has to run across all. Thank you, Sonal, uh, Vipul, Dev, Priya, Ankur, uh, and Naveen. And Please give a round of applause to the whole panel. They gave us some really interesting anecdotes and it was a pleasure to listen. I gained a lot of insights from you all and looking forward to see you soon. Thank you so very much.